Question number three. Andrew Little. Order. You just wait, Bill. Order, Andrew Little. Talofa Lava, Mr. Speaker. Talofa, Prime Minister. My question is to the Prime Minister. Why has he reneged on his commitment made in 2011 that, quotes, the $1,000 kickstart for new KiwiSaver members will remain as it is now, end quotes, by removing the kickstart in this year's budget? And did he renege on any other commitments in the budget? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, uh, those comments were made with respect to KiwiSaver changes in Budget 2011, when Labor's policy was well, about four leaders ago Order. when it comes to Labor, um, raising the retirement age at the time, as I said. The Government intends to reduce the amount of money it has to borrow from overseas to put in KiwiSaver and increase the amount of genuine savings from the private sector. That's pre precisely what we've done. The only reneging I've seen since the Budget has actually been from the Labor leader who spent Friday talking about means testing, then sort of reneged, then went on Order. news... Order. news Order. Order. Prime Minister. Supplementary. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Why? Get it back. Get it back. Why has he broken his promise made last year to invest $212 million in regional highways with Budget 2015 allocating less than half that amount over three years? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Could, sorry, could you just oh, repeat the question? I'll I couldn't hear the, one word. That order. I'll ask the, uh, Andrew Little to repeat the question. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Why has he broken his promise made last year to invest $212 million in regional highways with Budget 2015 allocating less than half that amount over three years? Well, right, Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. Um, you really need to direct that question to the Minister of Transport. Um, because, Mr Speaker, there will be, be a logical explanation. We're totally, we're totally committed to those roads, but they'll be accounted for in a certain way. Supplementary. Order. Supp order. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Mr Speaker, why has he broken his promise made in September last year to create 150,000 jobs in two years, given the budget shows him missing that target by 50,000 jobs? The uh, Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the, the member's wrong again. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Why has he broken his promise made in September last year to increase the average wage by $7,000 in three years, given the budget shows the average wage will uh, only rise half that much? Uh, the right Mr. honourable Mr. Prime Speaker, Minister. I think the budget showed that wage growth uh, over the next um, three or four years will be about seven thousand. I think three years prior to that was five thousand six hundred. But what is true is that average wages are growing faster than inflation under this government. Something that the previous government uh, could not achieve. Supplementary. Oh. Supplementary question, Tim McIndoe. Thank you, sir. To the Prime Minister, what reports has the Prime Minister received on other approaches to managing retirement savings policy? Provided it's Speaker. within the Prime Minister's responsibility, I call the right honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I've seen a number of conflicting reports on other approaches to retirement savings policy. One included a question about means testing New Zealand super. The answer was, and I quote, yep, I don't think we can avoid looking at that. And I quote again, You've got people over 65 able to keep on working, earning a good income, working alongside people who are doing the same or similar work, not getting it. Is it right that the person over 65 on a full-time income should also get this income, order, income supplement? Order, order. Mr Speaker. Order. Would the Prime Minister resume his seat? Order. This answer is only going to lead Andrew. to disorder. Order. Andrew Little. Why has he broken his promise made last year not to impose new taxes by putting a new levy on people entering and leaving the country and hiking the levy on broadband users, bearing in mind the Oxford Dictionary says a levy is, quotes, a tax raised by levying, end quote. Mr Speaker, right no, we Honourable Prime, Prime Minister. Speaker, we haven't broken our promise. What we have done is ensured that there'll be more money uh, for biosecurity. But Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker, Mr Little can spend all his time in question time asking these questions if he wants. But the real question is, will he get back on side with his caucus who now hate him because he's polling 25% because he wants to means test New Zealand super? It ain't going well, Andrew. Order. 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 
Order. Before I call the honourable uh, the honourable member, I w order. Before I call him, I want him to be aware of Speaker's ruling 1542A. It is not reasonable to use questions from the governing party or its support party simply to attack other members in the house. Tim McIndoe. Thank you, sir. What order? Tim McIndoe. What measures has the government taken? to ensure its retirement savings policies are sustainable over the long term. Speaker. Oh, no, right Honourable Prime Speaker, Minister. What an excellent question. We've set out a responsible path for overall government spending so that current settings for New Zealand Super are both affordable and fully factored into our long-term forecasts. As Treasury notes, New Zealand's current superannuation costs are quite low by world standards at less than 5% of GDP compared with over 9% on average across the OECD. And by 2060, that's 45 years from now, New Zealand's annual super costs are forecast to be 8% of GDP. That's lower than the current OECD average. Mr Speaker, if one was really worried about this issue, as one political party in the Parliament says they are, there are only three ways of resolving this issue. Raise the age of super, means test, or make it less generous to everybody. Mr. Sl Mr Little's ruled out two. It must be number three. No wonder your caucus order, was so... Order. 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 Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Why has he broken his promise to stop Kiwis becoming tenants in their own country by failing in this budget to stop foreign buyers who are purchasing one in every ten houses sold in Auckland and instead announcing a range of measures, none of which will make a difference to the Auckland house price crisis? Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, the member will be a lot more credible if he doesn't make up numbers. There is not one in ten, Mr Speaker. He has no evidence to support that. Actually, nobody knows. In fact, if he stopped making up policy on the hoof like means testing of super, he'd do a bit better as well. Supplementary. Number, Prime order, no, order, order. Supplementary question, the right honourable Winston Peters. About the primary question, which was renege on any other commitments. Order, in can I just have the supplementary question without You're getting it please. right now? I'm relating it to the primary question. Order, order. There is a member will resume his seat. There is simply no matter, no need to relate it to the primary question. The standing orders require that the supplementary question is related to the primary question. I call on the member to simply ask his supplementary question. Mr Speaker, point of order. Point of order. I am asking a supplementary question. I've used five words and you've stopped me. Order. Order. I'm very tempted not to allow the member to ask his supplementary question. When he wants to ask a supplementary question, I give the member the call. He rises and ask the question. There is no need for an introduction about relating it to the primary question. I don't want to have to repeat this for the member. We will be moving to somebody else if I need to. Point of order. Mr right Speaker, on. with the greatest respect, and I have been here longer than you. Order, order. It is a point of order. I intend to listen in silence. If I intend there to be some relativity to what I'm about to ask, to the primary question, that's to, up to my discretion. With the greatest respect, this is the first time I've had someone make the ruling you've just made from that chair. Order. Well, then I suggest the member needs to listen more often in question time. You are required to order. The member will stand and withdraw that remark immediately. I withdraw. Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Oh, supplementary question, Andrew Little. <laughs> order. The member will also be very familiar with standing orders. I have the right to decide where I'll take a supplementary question. I win the, warn the member that he would not get a second chance. I'm going to hear one from Andrew Little. I may change my mind and then let the member ask a supplementary. I may do so. so point of order. Right Honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker. Uh, you did not tell me that I would not get a supplementary question. Order. You've decided arbitrarily to do that now. Order. The member will immediately... The, order. The, member. the member will now leave the chamber.
Supplementary question, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Question to the Prime Minister. Why doesn't he just keep his promises rather than inventing new excuses for breaking them? Right, right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, this government uh, keeps its promises and that's why it keeps getting re-elected. And if the member wants to recreate history, he's welcome to it. Uh, but actually, he knows, like I know, uh, that the most popular thing on Thursday and Friday was our budget and the least popular thing was his decision to means test New Zealand super. Question number four, Barbara